Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today we're going to be walking through a beautiful Japanese garden, discovering different locations, and running into folks who can lend us their aid. This is the 100 Tori. This is a tile laying game in which all the players on their turn are going to be placing one tile out there and possibly scoring some tokens. Once you've got enough of those, you can turn them in for some victory points, and along the way you're also, like I said, appealing to different characters for special abilities in the game, and every time you do that, you're going to get some victory points as well. You're going to be getting a couple of victory points from a few different things, and then at the end, if you've got the most points, of course, you are going to be the winner of the game. So I was very excited about this. Um, uh, I was captivated by the look, captivated by the theme. What did I end up thinking of it? Well, we'll get to that right after I give you an overview here of how the game works. Here we go. Each round is going to have four different phases. The first thing you do is you may get help from one of these different characters. And they are there's a player aid here, unfortunately a single one, but it is on, on uh, cardboard. Uh, which has the different characters, how much they cost for uh, you to appeal to them, and what they do. So again, you can begin your turn by appealing to one of these people getting help from them. Uh, I will come back over them in just a second. Once I get to the end of the round, I'll, I'll cycle back around to them so you know what they do. So that's the first thing. The second thing you do is you expand the garden. You take a tile from your hand. Let's say it's uh, this player's turn. You have two tiles in your hand. You're going to take one, you are going to play it somewhere on the board, and then you are going to select one of the symbols on the board. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to select that symbol there, which is uh, on the path right there, and I'm going to find where the closest matching one is. It would be at the beginning over here, because every single token is represented there. And then I follow the shortest path to the closest one, and I'm going to get some of these little tokens. So I'm going to get one for the matching pair if I do that, which is this one right here. I'm going to get that. And then I am going to get uh, the gates. So you're going under the different gates, and you are going to score for the red ones, of which there are none out there, but there are some red red gates as you see there, right there on this edge of the tile. Every time you go under one of those you get another matching token and every time you go under one of the blue ones you get a different token, meaning not a non-matching token. In this case I get one of those and I get any other kind I want to. I will take one of these. Now I have two and two. Immediately when you have five of these that match you'll put them back in the supply and you'll get the larger token. If you ever get five again, you will flip this token, and so on. So there we go, that's my turn, and that was the expand the garden phase. After that comes the claim achievements, which I would, you know, do all these achievements if I've uh, claimed any. And then after that, I just replenish my hand by drawing a new tile, adding it to my hand, and it is the next player's turn. So, beginning of the round, appealing to one of the characters. Let's go through them, alright? The first one is the vendor. The vendor, when you appeal to them, you are going to discard a tile to the bottom of the stack and then you are going to draw two. At the end of that hand, or at the end of that play, rather, you will not replenish up to two because you're, you're going to have to, okay? So you're going to be able to you know, tuck one under, draw two, you'll be picking from those three to play. The next one is the samurai. You are going to play, uh, play the samurai piece here. Anywhere you want that's an empty space on the board and folks can't play there until the samurai is moved by being appealed to again. These, by the way, all of them have a, a cost right here next to them that you will pay for with either coins. You begin with a couple of these coins and then once they're gone, they're gone. That, that's all there is to them. Or these in any combination you want. You'll give them up to pay for these characters' help. Next up, we've got the poet. You are going to use the poet to mark and cover one of these different land type uh, locations, and you ignore it when you are checking for which one is the matching one that is the closest, right? So this allows you to make a much longer con connection, hopefully going under a bunch of different gates, getting just more for your play by hiding a closer symbol. 
After that, we've got the Geisha there. It lets you play two tiles. You score the second one only, but you can make a neat connection. Um, you know, you can maybe play something that has a gate first. And then play over here. And now that you go from this bridge, especially if this one's covered, all the way to the original bridge, you're going to get one of those, another one for this gate, and then a different thing for this. As long as it's not a bridge, it can be anything. And then another one for this gate. And again, as long as it's not a bridge, it can be anything. So that's the kind of thing that Geisha will let you do, is play twice, scoring just the second one. And then lastly, we've got the Gardener, who lets you uh, play a towel on top of another one. Like that. Alright, you can only do that one time to every towel out there, and you can never do it on the one that has the Gardener on it. So that's how those work, and that's going to be, like I said, the very first part of your turn. Now, every time you appeal to one of these characters, either, again, with the coins you began with, a couple of these that you begin with, or with the symbols, with the tokens here, every time you do that, you're going to grab a matching token. So if I appeal to the Geisha, which I just did, I'm going to grab this worth two victory points. Next time I appeal to the Geisha, I'll flip it for four. Next time I appeal to the Geisha, the third time, if this is still out here, I'm going to get that for three victory points. And after that, I can keep appealing to the Geisha, but I won't get anything anymore. So there you go. This is the, whoever gets to this one first by appealing to a character three times will get it. And there's one of these for every one of the characters. Uh, there's also these, which uh, you are going to acquire when you create a an enclosure, as the game says, which is, let's move these out of the way, when you create basically a separate group of paths that is not connected to anything else. They are enclosed, but they have to have at least two features in there. So, for example, if I do that, and I do... Um, that if I do something like this, I'm creating an enclosure right there. It's completely enclosed, it's made up of at least two tiles, has at least two features in it. When I do that, I grab one of these. When I do it again, and when I do it a third time, and so on. Right, same deal. Uh, the other thing is, I already explained these. You get one of these when you cash in five of the matching type, and then ten and so on. There's also two more bonuses in the game, which are these right here. And they, you, if whoever does it first will get a five victory point token, and then you get a three after that. And they are quite difficult to achieve, actually. This one means you have a five, at least, of each of the six different kinds of symbols you'll find out here. And then this one means you have tens, three tens at least, of any of them. So... You know, you can have that, and uh, that one, and that one. If I achieve that, I'll get one of these. If this one's still here, five points. If that one's already gone, I'll get the 3.1. So there you go. You're going to get, like I said, like you can see here, points from a bunch of different little things, little actions. Uh, cashing in the, the tokens that you're thinking you're not going to need, because they're worth nothing until you hit, five, you know, multiples of five. The caching and the ones you think you're not going to need for the characters, using characters for points, um, trying to make sure that you are cu coupling their ability with whatever you're planning on doing and, and, you know, making those victory points. Trying to manipulate all those little things in order to have the most points. And like I said, towels will run out, everybody will get one more turn. So there you go, that's the general flow of the game. Uh, let me give you, before I wrap up here, a little bit of a closer look at all the tiles just so you can see what the different features look like on the board. As you'll see, they are all actually like sort of word bubble text, you know, and they are pointing to something that is drawn on the map there. So that's the thing you are connecting to. You have to be mindful now, because sometimes you'll see something that is on a different path. So if you are simply looking for the closest thing, it might not be on the same path. Than, than what you're doing. So, um, let's see if I can find an example here. Play that. Assuming this isn't here right now. Play that. Okay, my closest is uh, that one. Maybe that one. There, Neither one of those I can get to because this one's on this outside path. This one, while featured there, is on that little sliver of path out there. Again, this is going to be much bigger. 
so it does get a little bit tricky to see those things and uh, I, I, I'll be honest I wish they were just printed on the path itself it might be a little less pretty but much more usable in my opinion so there you go uh, and this red one on the back just happens to be the starting tile there with all the different symbols on that's enough I think to give you an idea let's go ahead and go back up top let me uh, tell you more about it so overall I was a little bit disappointed by this game the look is certainly there and the thematic involvement is certainly there but I found the usability to be a little problematic with the way the board or the, the tiles are all illustrated. And I also thought the game was less than captivating. At no moment did I find myself uh, really leaning forward in excitement and anticipation in, uh, you know, in the promise of a fantastic something about to happen. You just sort of went through the motions and at the end someone had more points than someone else or than everyone else. And they were the winner. That was basically it. That's not to say this is a bad game. It's just one I was really hoping would be spectacular. And I did not personally find it to be that. So let's break it down a little bit. I'm going to start with the things I liked. And I'll end with my main thoughts as to why this is getting the score it's getting from me anyway. So the things I liked, like I said, thematic ties. The game is beautiful, it's very engaging. You're wandering around, you're discovering new features. It's a lovely setting, it's a, it's a lovely uh, uh, thematic world that you are being pulled into. No problem there. And then the game length, I think, is very nice. The game does not outstay its welcome. It, uh, you feel like you are both making progress on growing the board and, and working towards things but also not slogging through, uh, you know, a, 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 towards an end that you can not see, that is not in sight. I thought it had a nice curve, you know, to it. The other things that you would think I would give a, a big thumbs up to here is the aesthetics. And at the end of the day, yeah, the game is beautiful. It's a gorgeously illustrated game. My issue with aesthetics is that in aesthetics, I also put... put uh, usability of, of the look and the design of things and I have a problem with that I don't like that the tiles in the game show you a small feature you're connecting to drawn onto the board in a realistic manner uh, you know if the path is you know uh, several meters wide let's say or feet wide then the feature is drawn there as a tiny little you know uh, actual feature and then there's a word bubble pointing to it, which is not on the road. And I would have much preferred, and I think it would have been more intuitive, it would have been simpler to play, if it simply was on the road. Um, just the symbol drawn right on the road. Is it realistic? No. Is it extremely usable? Yes. And I don't like when artwork and immersion trump usability. I think usability has to come first. Doesn't matter how gorgeous the game is. And so I had several moments, uh, and it happened with several players, where this idea of, oh, I see a symbol over there, I see a symbol over here, that's the closest one, right? Yes, it is, technically, if you're just counting tiles. But it's pointing at a thing that isn't on this road. So that was, you know, that threw people for a loop a little bit. It also quite slows down the game towards the end. So that's my issue with aesthetics. Replayability. The game plays largely the same way every time you play. You are collecting things at a different rate. You might be appealing to different characters at a different rate. But you're kind of doing as much of it as you can. Because everything's worth two, three, or five points. So you're just sort of doing all the same stuff. Where can I go to get a bunch of stuff? And it ends up being a game less about thinking where I can play... And more about just finding where I can play. You know, you are staring at the board, not looking for interesting strategic decisions to make. You are just looking for actual, you know, the ability to play somewhere. Sensibly, you know. Um, so, I also thought the replayability was lacking there. The ease of play. Again, not a game that's complex, but not captivating. Uh, some issues with the, uh, the way it looks, usability-wise. And then lastly, tactics and strategy. The game is, there are things to do that will get you points. That's great. And there are different things you can do and hopefully push towards one thing that will get you ideally more points. 
that's also great. But you spend less time, like I said, thinking about that than just finding the place to play it. The game, towards the end especially, really slows down to a grind. Uh, you are just, uh, the players will just be sitting there just staring at the board quietly, finding what to do. And so it's a game that does not suffer from analysis paralysis. It suffers from visual paralysis. It's all about just finding uh, where things lead. Not necessarily, aha, I found a super clever move. It's more, aha... I found where I can play legally and make sense, right? Um, you can play anywhere, but, you know, most of the plays are stupid, so you just have to find one play that kind of makes sense. And I had several players who kind of just on their turn, their turns would come around and they would go, that's not a great play, let me keep looking, I'll forget it, I'll play there. Where I, where I said it wasn't a great play, but it's something. She says, I don't want to have to sit here looking at every absolute possibility, deciphering if the symbol is on that road or this road, I'm just going to play this one move. It's the kind of game that you will absolutely destroy at if you, if you don't worry about anyone's feelings or time restrictions. If you sit there and look for the absolute best play you can make, you can find it. You also absolutely wreck the play experience. That's the issue, right? So, overall, a neat game. One that I would probably recommend with fewer players, so you avoid some of those issues. But one that I found myself disappointed by. I wanted a game that was more intuitive, more engaging, allowed for clever plays, and I wasn't really getting that from this one. I did not hate my play of it, and I'm rating this a 6 out of 10, which is not a bad score. That's a game that is fine. It's okay. But I was hoping I would really dig this. Uh, you know, the, the look is so amazing and the, uh, the theme and the idea is so cool that, yeah, I can't help but be a little bit disappointed. So there you go. If none of those things you found to be an issue from the overview, if you think I'm making too big a deal out of the whole, uh, you know, the symbology and where it's drawn on the board, then by all means, give this one a shot. It's well constructed. It's very attractive. If you are, like me, hyper-concerned about usability of games, in, in games, then perhaps try it first before you buy it, or, uh, you know, g give it an, another look a little closer, go through pictures, things like that. So there you go, the 100 Tori, a 6 out of 10 from me, like I said. I'm Z Garcia, thanks everybody, I'll see you on the next one.